This is the first section of six sections on subnetting and creating custom subnet masks. Now, subnetting is one of the most difficult things we do in the computer field, so I encourage you to go through all six sections consecutively, uh, work on the practice problems, view any section again, and also view the summary. This is the first of six sections on subnetting and creating custom subnet masks. In the first section, we have a quick introduction on why we want to create these things called custom subnet masks and why we perform subnetting. Then we'll talk about subnet IDs, and then we'll go over the four steps in creating custom subnet masks and subnetting. Now, step one is to design our physical network. Step two is to choose a custom subnet mask for our network. Step three is determining the subnet IDs that will help us number our networks. And then finally, step four is determine the exact host IDs we'll use, use on each physical network. Let's quickly review what a subnet mask is. Now remember, a subnet mask is an address that accompanies an IP address and indicates which portion of the IP address is the network ID and which portion is the host ID. Now the IP address and subnet mask are interrelated and each only has meaning in the context of the other and that the IP address and the subnet mask are the minimum address requirements for any TCP IP device. One of the easiest ways to understand a subnet mask is to view it in binary. Now ones in the subnet mask indicate which portion of the associated IP address is the network ID and the zeros in the subnet mask indicate which portion of the associated IP address is the host ID. Now for example, I have the address 207.23.106.99. Now we know that this is a class C address because the first number 207 is in the class C range. Now the subnet mask therefore would be set to all ones in the first octet because the first octet is part of the network ID, all ones in the second octet because again the second octet is part of the network ID. The third octet also would be set to all ones because according to class C specification the entire first three octets are the network ID. And then finally the last octet would be set to ones to indicate that that portion of the associated IP address is the host ID. Now when we convert these binary numbers to decimal numbers, the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0. Here are our default subnet mask. Now remember class A specifies that the first octet is a network address and the last three octets are the host address. So therefore the subnet mask would be set to the first octet as ones because again in the subnet mask binary ones mean that that portion of the associated IP address is the network ID and then the last three octets are set to zeros to indicate the last three octets of a class A address are the host ID. Now class B is set to the first two octets as ones because again the subnet mask when it's set to ones indicate that portion of the associated IP address is the network address and then in this case the last two octets are the host address and they're set to zeros. Then class C is the first three octets set to one, that is the network ID, the last octet set to zeros and that's the host ID. And then converting those to the associated decimal values of 255000 for a class A, 255255000 for a B and of course 255255250 for a C. Now remember according to our classful naming scheme that the address class also specifies the number of hosts we can support. Now class A gives us a very large network with almost 17 million hosts. A class B network still a very large network at about 65,000 hosts and a class C network um, essentially a smaller network with a maximum of 254 hosts. And when it comes to addressing in our network, say we've been assigned the number 152.77.00. Now this is a class B address, and I've listed out the subnet mask here, 255.255.00. Now this subnet mask, of course, it indicates the first two octets are the network ID, and the last two octets are the host ID. Now remember one of the key rules of IP addressing is that all devices or all hosts on the same physical segment must have the same network ID as specified by this subnet mask. Now according to the subnet mask we have a single network ID and if we only have one network ID that would only allow us one physical segment and with a class B address that's 65,000 hosts on one physical segment. 
As we saw in the previous slide, the Class B address 152.77.0.0 with the default subnet mask of 255.255.0.0 only gives me one network ID. And that would require me to only use one physical segment. But the truth is, is I'm going to have in a large network many physical segments. Because remember, whenever I introduce a router, I create a new physical segment. Because our definition of a physical segment is all devices out one port of a router or all the devices between two routers. Now in order to correctly address the physical segments, we're going to have to use a custom subnet mask. Now the custom subnet mask allows us to do this because the custom subnet mask allows us to create subnets. Custom subnet masks allow us to create these things called subnets. Now a subnet is a portion or a subdivision of the IP addresses that are associated with a larger network ID. Now the range of IP addresses or the number of IP addresses in a subnet is determined by the subnet mask. And we'll see that different subnet masks create different ranges of IP addresses. Now when we start numbering our addresses, the subnets and the associated physical segments must be meticulously numbered, otherwise network communication will not be successful. When we're addressing our IP networks, we have to really be aware of the connection between the hardware and the software. Now when I talk about hardware, I'm talking about the physical segments. Now remember, physical segments are defined by routers, and our definition was all devices out one port of a router is considered a physical segment, or all devices between two routers is also considered a physical segment. So the hardware is the physical setup of the network, but now the software, the software is the IP addressing or the subnets, because remember a subnet is the portion or a subdivision of the IP addresses that are associated with an assigned network ID. And the payoff here is that all hosts or all devices on the same physical segment have IP addresses in the same subnet. Well, why create subnets? Well, perhaps it's more important to ask why create physical segments? Because as we go forward, we'll see that every time we create a physical segment, we'll have to create a subnet, a range of IP addresses that are appropriate for that physical segment. Now, the reason we create physical segments, well, there's many reasons. It could be hardware specifications. It could be a specification uh, based upon a standard like Ethernet. Uh, in, the old, in the old days of Ethernet, uh, you can only get uh, about 100 stations on thin coax Ethernet, or maybe there's a restriction on the vendor's equipment. In either case, if you had a large number of hosts and your hardware specification supported a smaller number, you'd be creating multiple physical segments. Also, based upon network performance, if I have a Class B network that provides me the opportunity to address my 50,000 hosts, well, gosh, I can't put those 50,000 hosts on a single segment, I'm going to have to break that up into numerous segments. And every time I create a physical segment, I have to have a subnet or a range of IP addresses appropriate for that physical segment. Also, based upon geographic layout, um, if I have multiple geographic sites, I'll probably interconnect those with routers. And again, I'm creating physical segments. Another reason could be different topologies. Say I'm using Ethernet in part of my network and token ring in another part of my network. Well, the way I would connect those segments is, again, with a router. And anytime you throw a router in, you're going to create physical segments. And then you're going to be required to create subnets. Now, remember, we have our hardware layout. That's our physical segments, and that's defined by the routers. Now, we need to match that to our software addresses, or our IP addressing, and our subnets. Because a subnet is a, por is a portion, or a subdivision of the IP addresses that are associated with an assigned network ID. And we create these subnets with custom subnets mask. And we have to set our subnetting up so that all hosts on the same physical segment have IP addresses in the same subnet or the same range of IP addresses.